In this video, we're going to talk about something that also has to do with comparisons, as we discussed in video number 23, and that is the comparative and superlative forms of adjectives. So let's say we're talking about two baseball teams, the Yankees and the Mets. Apologies if you're a Mets fan, but now let's say I want to compare which team is, you know, more skilled. I, want, I don't want to use the words, I want to give it away, but, you know, if I'm just talking about one team, I would just say, you know, the Yankees are good, right? Good is the adjective I'm going to use there. Now, of course, I can use any other adjective there, but we're just going to use good in this case. If I were to compare the Yankees and the Mets, I'm going to say, for instance, the Yankees are better than the Mets. So here I'm using the comparative version of this adjective, good, to become better. Now, let's uh, come up with another example. Now, of course, this is in a regular case, right? We have good, which becomes better, and then as you'll see later, it becomes best when it's the superlative form. But when we have any adjective, generally, it's going to follow a regular form. So, um, let's say John is rich, but if he is you know, more rich than another person, it's going to be John is richer than Mike. Now, note, I use the comparative when I'm comparing two things. So in this case, John to Mike, here the Yankees to the Mets. And note, when I'm using the comparative, I take, if I, it's a regular adjective, I take the adjective and I add ER to the end of it to form the comparative. Now, what if you're comparing more than two things? What if we're comparing three things or more? So this, the comparative, just to sum up, comparative is two things. When we compare three things or more, we use the superlative. Uh, so three things plus. So an example here would be John is the richest, you know, of his friends or whatever. Uh, so note here, you know, if I said John is richer than his friends, that would have been fine. I'd be comparing, you know, two things, but that'd be a little awkward because you'd be taking friends as a group. But anyway, it's probably better to say John is the richest of his friends. And note here, I'm using EST. So the superlative is EST. Note above, if we were talking about the Yankees, it'd be the Yankees are the best team in the major in Major League Baseball, right? Because there I'm comparing, at least implicitly, Yankees to all the other 29 or however many teams there are in the MLB. Uh, 29 other teams in the Major League Baseball, so more than two things. All right, so that's the general rule, right? You use ER, ER, when you're comparing two things, and EST when you're comparing three things. Now, there are a few other rules to, to remember when it comes to the SAT and the superlative, and that is the difference between words like more and most. So I'm going to use more, as you might expect, with two things. Right, so I could say... Um, the Yankees are more rich than the Mets, which is a little awkward to say. We probably would say the Yankees are richer than the Mets, but I could say more rich. Um, how about famous? Because uh, that's probably a better case here, because sometimes with a superlative like famous, you really can't have famous-er. So you would use more famous. So you know, the Yankees are more famous than whoever. Um, if I use most, it's going to be, again, with three things plus. So I would say um, out of... All the American League teams, the Yankees are the most famous. All right, I'm just right. Three things plus I use most in that case, and I wouldn't say famous est because that's awkward. So yeah, so you can either use the adjective with er or est, uh, or you can use more or most, and you especially use these when the adjective wouldn't really lend itself to being uh, changed into a comparative or superlative form. Uh, another example would be say the word beautiful. You wouldn't say beautiful or beautiful. Oops. Beautiful. Right? You wouldn't say beautifuler or beautifulest. You would say most beautiful, more beautiful. Okay, so that's another thing when it comes to uh, more and least. Also, you would also say less and least, right? So he is less intelligent. Uh, he is the least intelligent, period. All right, so those are some other comparison words. There are other things, though, that we do need to know that the SAT likes to test a lot. One of them is as follows. When you compare two things, you use between. So if I say between John and Mike, John has more money, period. There you can see I'm using between. 
then I would use more or the comparative version ER with that sentence. If I'm comparing three things plus, again, you would use among. And this is something that the SAT tests a lot. In real life, um, it's much more fluid between these. I don't think you hear among as much as you hear between, uh, even though among, I guess, technically is correct. But on the SAT, they will test this. So if you have three or more things, you've got to use among. So it would be like among Bob, John, and Mike, blah, 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 whatever. Right? And then in this case, then, you would also use the superlative, EST. All right. So <laughs> what else can we say? So that would be uh, between and among. Another thing to know is... This is not exactly comparison, but it gets to the idea of counting and non-counting. It's when to use words like less or fewer. So you use less when you're talking about something that can't be counted. So happiness, for instance. I can't count happiness. It doesn't make any sense. I can't say that there's 10 happiness. So if I'm talking about less of it, I'm going to say less happiness. With fewer, it's when things can be counted. So I would say I have fewer books than he does. Now, again, it's not necessarily whether it can be counted in practice, but whether it can be counted in principle. right? So you know, if I have a, tr a million books, I, I probably can't count them in practice. But in principle, I can, so we would use fewer. All right, so I would use fewer with things that can be counted, less with things that can't be counted. An example of this where you might see this in real life is in the checkout line at the grocery store in those express lines. If you see 10 items or less, that's actually technically grammatically incorrect. right? It should be 10 items or fewer because, I, as you can see, I can count the number of items. All right, let's see if there's anything else that we should add here. We've gone over comparative and superlative. Uh, we've gone over among and between, which are the big ones there. We've gone over more and most. Um, and note again, as I mentioned earlier, that when you're doing, when you're doing any kind of comparison, you've got to make sure you're comparing apples to apples, right? So if I say, you know, Steven Spielberg's movies are more famous than, um, I don't know, George Lucas, right? You can tell there that there's an issue. I have to do more than George Lucas's movies or whatever, period. Um, so again, the rules and comparisons stay here too. you got to make sure you use the apples and apples comparisons, that you're not comparing two different things. Uh, and then also, once you do that, you have to determine, okay, how many um, things am I comparing? Therefore, do I use the comparative or the superlative? Do I use more or most? Do I use among, between, and so on? And the SAT, that's what they're going for. And that's pretty much all you need to know for that section.